Hi everybody. Move my webcam a little bit. So today we're going to talk about the uh, tools that you use for doing all this electrical work. I talked about it last week. I showed you a little bit, but we're going to go deeper into it. So I'm going to go over this stuff and then I'm going to have another video that's going to be right after it tied to it where I'm going to demonstrate all of this stuff for you. All right. So let's take a look what we got going on here. The simplest tool that we can use is a test light, right? It's basically a bulb with uh, two wires on it. So naturally you have one wire with an alligator clip. The other end is a probe. If you hook it to the battery on the negative side and you touch it to positive, it lights up. If you connect it to, to positive and you touch it to ground, it lights up. Okay, either way. So you can use it to test for the presence of either, right? Test it for the presence of power, voltage, and the presence of ground, negative. Using a jumper wire, very simple tool. It's a piece of wire with clips on the end. Doesn't even have to clip, be clips on the end, but we can take it and attach it to two points. And whatever's at the first point will travel to the second point. So we can use it to, to bypass something. We can use it to supply something. Let's say we think we have a bad ground. We can use a jumper wire to touch ground to it and, and bring it. Same thing with power, right? Very simple, just basically a piece of wire and we can, we can jump stuff. I'll demonstrate that later. Self-powered test lights are used to check for, for continuity, for connections. There's self-powered. This is called a power probe down here. And I am going to show you the power probe I'll bring one in from my garage and we'll use it on the board here. That power probe is like the, I call it the finger of God because you hook it to power and ground and out from this point here, you can direct power or ground. So it'll detect either or you can supply either. It can turn anything into a pile of smoke at the will of a button. Okay, now a non-powered test light is like what we showed before. Clip, point, bulb, or an LED. Touch it to negative and positive with either side, and you have a light that lights up indicating the presence of whatever it is you were looking for. A multimeter, a digital volt ohm meter, is a device that you will use tremendously. I have one that I've had for many, many years, and it is a device that can measure diodes, voltage, frequency, duty cycle, temperature, amperage resistance, and tons of other things built into it. This part up here called a logic probe looks like this right here, and that basically will pick up similar kind of things. It'll pick up continuity, power, and ground, and it's self-contained. You can command it the same way. Use that for computer boards and, and things like that. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty cool video on how to use these things. I want to pay you to pay attention. I want you to take notes on it, and you will start getting a feel for how you hook this stuff up. Up top, you see we have an analog meter. Believe it or not, those meters have been around forever and they're still used. They're used for checking airbag systems and, and for certain types of modules and things like that. Still one in my toolbox as well. In this video, I'm going to cover multimeters and how to use them to measure voltage, current, resistance, and continuity. First up, where do you buy a multimeter? Well, multimeters are everywhere. You can get them at Radio Shack, Sears, Dollar Stores, Walmart, Amazon, eBay, whatever's easiest for you. Okay, so how do you choose which one to get? First up, at the bare minimum, make sure the meter you're looking at can measure voltage, current, resistance, and continuity. If you can find one that measures capacitance and temperature as well, go for it. Unless you're working with some super special application, don't worry too much about accuracy. Plus or minus 2% is usually good enough, and even cheap multimeters these days will be that accurate or better. Next, the multimeter should have a digital display, not that old school analog crap, and it should have auto-ranging functionality for as many things as possible. Trust me, you don't want to waste your time screwing around with manual ranging. If you're too lazy to shop around, just get this one. 50 bucks, it'll do everything you need, and you won't outgrow it anytime soon. Okay, so now you have a multimeter, how do you use it? Let's start with measuring DC voltages. First, check the cables. Make sure the black lead is in the jack labeled COM or COMMON. 
and once it's in there, you'll never need to take it out because the black lead always goes to common. The red probe, on the other hand, is something you'll have to pay very close attention to. If you plug it into the wrong jack, you will blow a fuse in your multimeter. We want to measure voltage right now, so I'm plugging in the red lead into the jack labeled volts, not amps. Next, set the dial to measure DC voltage. Touch the red probe to the positive terminal of your device and the black probe to the negative terminal of your device and you should get a voltage reading. If you get the wires backwards, that's okay, you'll just get a negative reading on your multimeter. And that's actually a good way to figure out polarity. Now you can measure voltages in pretty much any DC circuit as long as you're careful to not short anything out with the metal probes. Okay, let's move on to measuring AC voltages. Set the dial to the AC voltage setting and again, make sure the red lead is in the jack labeled voltage. Touch the probes to the AC voltage source that you want to measure, and you'll get your reading. As long as you don't touch the metal parts of the probe or short them out, this is perfectly safe. And as you would expect, there's no AC voltage coming out of this DC battery. Measuring resistance is easy too. Make sure the red lead is in the jack labeled ohms for resistance, and set the dial to the resistance setting. Here is me measuring the resistance of the skin on my hand. Here's me measuring the resistance of a resistor. And here I am measuring the resistance of a speaker. Now you might be wondering if you can measure the resistance of something in a circuit. Well, unfortunately it most likely won't work. You're going to have to remove the resistor from the circuit before measuring it. Next, let's talk about continuity. Measuring continuity basically just means checking whether or not there's a good connection between any two points in a circuit. To measure continuity, make sure your red probe is in the jack labeled continuity, or in my case resistance, and set the dial to the continuity setting. Test that the continuity function is working correctly by touching the probes together. Whenever there's almost zero resistance between two points, the multimeter will beep. You can use the continuity function to check if cables are internally broken or not. In the context of circuit boards, if there's a good copper trace between any two points, the multimeter will beep. If the circuit board is messed up, no beeps for you. Finally, let's use our multimeter to measure current. Set the dial to the amp setting. For almost all multimeters, there's going to be a separate jack just for measuring current. My multimeter has two. One for currents up to 10 amps, and one for currents up to 400 milliamps. I usually start out with the amps jack, but if I need more accuracy, I can switch to the milliamps jack later. Now, measuring current is a little trickier than the rest of things. I can't just touch the probes and get an amp reading. In order to see how much current is flowing through a wire, I have to cut the wire and splice in the multimeter in series with the flow before I can get a measurement. Here I have a simple circuit with a battery pack, a motor, and some wires. In order to measure the current drawn by the motor, I cut the wire, splice in the multimeter, and now I can see that the motor is drawing 60-ish milliamps. If I want more accuracy, I can switch to the milliamp settings, and now I can see that the motor is drawing somewhere between 57 and 63 milliamps. Alright, thanks for watching and have fun with your new multimeter.